We hit the negatives. You're gonna need a fridge compressor, some refrigerant, tons of hose clamps, a small ball valve for tubes, some braided 3 8 inch tubing, a small computer water cooling radiator, and a large radiator that came off the back of a fridge. So before I build this, I think you should know how the regular AC cycle works. So when the compressor turns on, it's gonna pump all the gas refrigerant into this giant condenser right here. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna cool down the gas because when you compress gas, it gets very hot. Once the gas reaches a certain temperature and pressure, it will liquefy and the liquid will come down around the radiator and come out of this tube right here as cooled liquid. It will then go down through the tube and will hit a small needle-like hole that I punched in this syringe lid. And that will restrict the flow, spraying only a small amount of liquid into the radiator at the time so the compressor can keep up. While all that's happening, the compressor is also pulling a vacuum on the radiator, which makes the cooling effect even greater. And if you want to test this at home, what you can do is you can take a butane can hold it upside down and spray it on a napkin or something and you'll see that the napkin immediately freezes up. The same thing is happening here because we're releasing high pressure liquid and it's turning to gas inside the radiator and that uses a lot of heat to turn the liquid into a gas and that's why we get our cooling effect. To make the hole for the refrigerant to flow through I used a pin and the cap of a syringe. This part then gets inserted into a tube and held together with a hose clamp. Then this part goes on one side of the radiator. Next, I use a piece of 3 8 inch tubing along with a hose clamp to connect this 1 4 inch tube to the condenser. Now we use yet another hose clamp to connect that 1 4 inch tube that we connected to the condenser to the radiator. Now one very important part that you guys should note is that I used a super small piece of tubing here and that is so I could connect them almost directly together with a ton of hose clamps. And this is because the vapors that come out of this compressor are upwards of 150 degrees Fahrenheit and also at around 175 PSI and that is a ton for a small little plastic tube to endure. Even my last tubes that are 3 8 inch they look like this. They ballooned up it ballooned almost three times the size when I compressed it and then it popped. So we're going to be using a small 1 4 inch tube along with a ton of hose clamps. And with that I turned on the compressor and checked to make sure there weren't any leaks. And surprisingly, when I went to take the temperature for no good reason, it was way lower than ambient temperature. And this is because the air that we're pumping through the system is actually compressing just like it would with the normal refrigerator. And it is getting slightly warm over here. And then it is coming down here, getting all nice and cold. And then it is expanding, which makes it even colder, which is cooling down the radiator. I had no idea it'd be this good though. I mean, it's just air. There's no refrigerant in this thing at all. That's super cool. Well, all the fittings seem to be holding up, so let's do the vacuum side. I slapped a length of braided tubing on the output of the radiator. Then we have our filler port. This is basically just a small T, and it has braided tubing on each side. Now it's all complete, and you'll notice that I haven't used any hose clamps on the output side, and that is because it is so low pressure that we don't need them. It's only about 30 to 40 PSI. And here we have the T along with the 1 4 inch filling tube and a small ball valve right here that will connect to the 134A cylinder. Let's plug it in. We can hear the compressor turn on and it's extremely quiet and that's pretty good. And we can also hear the gas inside of the radiator. Now we'll connect this to the cylinder and start filling it. You can hear the immediate pitch change as soon as the heavy gas goes in. Look at that, already down to 9 degrees Fahrenheit. Look at that. So as you can see here, the thing actually exploded. So now I've got a nice braided tube in, in place of the exploded one. And this one should not explode for any reason. When it blew out, we lost all the refrigerant, so it's time to recharge it again. Look at that, 20 degrees in under 30 seconds. And I'm still adding the refrigerant. There we go, 5 degrees. Wow. We hit the negatives. So here you can see the actual liquid flowing through the tube. And you can see it's not really a constant flow. It's more just like little bubbles going up of the liquid. But you can see how the little orange syringe cap is stopping it and making it go through a tiny little hole and cooling down the radiator. And this thing is already starting to ice up. 
So this is a low side pressure. It's about 15 to 20 PSI, and that is really good. That means this compressor is doing a great job. I have no clue what the high end is, but I'm assuming somewhere around 100 to 200. Hence why I used the rated 2 after it exploded. Although the cold side is minus 2 degrees Fahrenheit, and that is super cold by the way, the hot end is around 86. And right there you can see it's 105. And that is why I put so many little brackets on it so it didn't explode. Because you can see it's already puffing up right there. My best guess to why the other hose exploded was one, it was not rated for the pressure, and two, there's actually little pieces of rust inside this radiator because I accidentally used it for water in the past. So to fix that, I put a small piece of filter paper for a high pressure PCP pump, and then that blocks all the little remnants from hitting the little teeny hole and clogging it up, building more pressure than the system can handle. So yeah, look at that. One degree Fahrenheit. This thing is cold. All sub 10 degrees Fahrenheit. The whole thing. That's really good. I know a lot of you guys at home probably do not have this stuff and it is quite expensive. I bought it when it was cheap, but remember what I said about the butane can about how it get also gets cold? You can basically use any type of gas that will liquefy under minimal pressure. I mean, this stuff, it liquefies under like 45, 50 degree pressure at room temperature, but who would have thought it was this easy to create an AC unit? I mean, this thing is working well, the whole thing's iced up, there's, there's snow coming off of it. If I were to guess how powerful this thing was, I'd say around 2500 BTU or somewhere in that range, just judging off of the compressor wattage, which is around 300 watts. So I mean, this is, this is a really cool build. I've got a ton of this tubing, and I know what you're thinking. I can make a split unit, and I might. Problem is, I don't think I have enough refrigerant to fill the entire system. So I'll need to buy some propane or a lot of butane or something like that. And that is not, not great because it eats through the plastic a little bit. And we don't want it leaking because, of course, it's flammable. I hope you guys like this video. You might see more of this later, but for now, See you next time.